This is the fourth and final of this series entitled, If It Is To Be. We have seen that if it is to be, it is up to me. Meaning that when we come to worship, it is our job to worship. It is our job to understand how to be saved and go about doing that. It is our job to understand God through His Word and come to better knowledge and appreciation of the Bible. We have seen that if it is to be, it is not up to me. Because everything that we do is by the grace of God. And though we have responsibilities, it is God's grace. We have seen that if it is to be, it is for me. Heaven is to be, and it has been prepared for me. And today we close it out by an understanding that if it is to be, it is not for me. Today we try to put a positive spin, if you will, on the negative thought of the Bible's discussion of hell. It's a real place. It is to be. Back in the early part of the 1900s, uh, there was a controversy that arose stating that hell is not a real place. In fact, it is merely a word that refers to you're burned up and you cease to exist. Well, in the first part of these 2000s, it has come back. And once again, a book has been published saying that hell is a word that means you will simply be burned up and cease to exist. And yet, that seems not to me to be the Bible discussion. The positive spin that I want us to understand is, yes, hell is a real place, but guess what? It was not prepared for me. When God prepared it, He did not have me in mind. And we will see today that concept. Let me first of all tell you about Robert Pershing Wadlow. Here's a guy who at the time had the Guinness Book of World Records for being the tallest man in the world. He was 8 feet 11 inches tall, weighed 490 pounds. Born in 1918, died in 1940. 21 years old. He had a disease of the pituitary gland that just kept him growing and growing, and he was just not able to survive, and they had no way of understanding and treating it. He was from Alton, Illinois. I first knew about him because when we were in Arnold, Missouri, just across the river, one of the members of the congregation owned a cafe that we would go to, and they knew him. And he would come with his family and visit in their cafe. They even had a picture of him on the cafe wall. This is a picture of him getting in his car. And you notice how everybody's gathering around to see him. He was a sight. But he's getting in a car that his dad had modified. On the side where he is getting in, there is no back seat. Because he would sit in the back seat so that his legs could stretch all the way to the front seat. Because a standard car does not fit. Something that does not fit. We were at Casey Jones Restaurant in Jackson, Tennessee on Friday. Following the lectures, we took our students who are at Fried Hardeman out to eat, and we went to this buffet, and I've known about it since the days I was in school, and they're still doing it, and it's still wonderful, and it's the greatest place, not only for men because of the wonderful buffet, but it is an antique shop for the women. It's the perfect date 
Because you can take a girl there and you can sit and continue to eat while she goes out and shops. And you don't have to do that and she doesn't have to do that. It's a wonderful date place. Whether you're married or not. And, and we took these kids and on the wall as you go in, there is this huge pair of boots. I don't remember what the size, 25 or something. And it says, if these fit, your meal is free. <laughs> now, I always wanted to ask, well, what if both feet fit in one? Does that work? It doesn't work. You have to have that size shoe if it fits. Anybody today struggling? Your pants don't fit? I made sure today that I wore a suit that I actually could button so that I would not be demonstrating a suit that does not fit. The point of this is hell does not fit me. It was not made for me. For just a few minutes, consider what the Bible says about hell. We ask, first of all, what is hell? The Greek word is Gehenna, and it simply means, as we see from Scripture, we understand what it is. In Matthew 23 and in verse 33, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, the scribes, and in that entire chapter, he was rebuking them. And he looked at them and he said in verse 33, do you think that you will escape, notice, the condemnation of hell? Hell is a place of condemnation. According to Scripture, it is a place of fire. In Matthew 5 and in verse 22, Jesus made the statement saying, If you're angry with your brother, you're in danger of the judgment. If you say to your brother, Raka, you'll be called before the council. But if you say to your brother, you fool, you will be in danger of hell fire. He warned in Matthew 18 in verse 9, if, you have, if your eyes cause you to sin, pluck them out, for it is better to you to live in this life blind than to enter into hell fire with two eyes. James chapter 3 and in verse 6, James was talking about the tongue, and he said it is a world of iniquity, and it is centered in the body and sets the whole body on fire and sets on fire the whole course of nature, and itself will be set on fire by hell. Hell is a place of condemnation. Hell is a place of fire. Hell is a place of fire that never will be quenched, according to Mark 9 in verse 43. That's what hell is. Condemned fire that'll never be quenched. But it's not for me. It's for Satan. Well, now, who is Satan? Who is the devil? Well, the Bible tells me who the devil is. There is some process of reasoning and understanding that goes into this. For instance, Hebrews chapter 1 in verse 7, the Bible says of God, he makes his angels spirits and his ministers spirits to serve him. God makes the angels ministers. Notice Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. Speaking about Jesus, he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Without him was nothing made made. He is before all things, and everything was created by him or through him and for him. Jesus created, he was the agent of creation of everything that was created. And notice in that text it says, He created all thrones and dominions and principalities and powers. 
Jesus created everything. We are left with two possibilities. Either Satan was uncreated and therefore like God, or he was created and therefore like us as being created. Well, I think it is obvious that Satan is an angel who was created. Isn't it interesting to know that Jesus created the angel who became the devil? And it was Jesus who came to eradicate the same devil? Look at Revelation chapter 12. Interesting text. Notice it with me, if you will. Revelation 12. I understand that the book of Revelation is highly symbolic. There's a lot there that is written in such symbolism that the actuality of the existence of the thing mentioned cannot be like a monster with three heads. But this text has a ring of reality. Let's start in verse 7. And war broke out in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon, and notice, his angels fought. And they were not able to prevail. Neither was there found in heaven a place for them anymore. Now look at verse 9. So the great dragon was cast out. The serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. Notice, he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. The text that was read from Matthew chapter 25 and verse 41 is a part of a judgment day scene when Jesus says that all nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides the sheep from the goats. He'll put the sheep on the right and put the goats on the left. And of course you know he says that the sheep will enter into the joys of the Lord. But to the goats on the left he says to them, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil, and his angels. All things were created by God. Therefore, Satan, like all the angels, were created by God through Jesus. But there came a time when Satan led a rebellion in heaven. I've often wondered why anybody in heaven would rebel against God. I've wondered why it would be that the devil would choose no longer, according to John 14, where it's called the Father's house. Why would he no longer want to be in the Father's house? It occurred to me when reading this text this week, there's an interesting phrase in verse 9. He was cast out to the earth. I wonder, did God create the world and everything in it, including Adam and Eve? Was he enjoying this relationship with them? And then Satan became jealous and he stood up and he raised an insurrection I want that place I, I want those people to worship me I want that relationship was he then cast out to the earth where they were was it then that he began to work against those 
to steal them from the God who had made him so that he could have the praise and adoration that he was getting from them? I know this. Satan was created. He rebelled against God. He was kicked out. These other details seem to fit. And after he was kicked out of heaven, the Bible says, he became the God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4. He was called the prince of the power of the air. Ephesians 2 and verse 2. And according to Hebrews chapter 2 and in verse 14, Jesus came to destroy him, the devil, who had the power of death. Who is the devil? Who is Satan? I think the record of Scripture is clear. He's a created being who rebelled against the God who created him. He was cast out. He operates as the God of the world, the prince of the power of the air, and the only power or control that he has is the power of death. That is the devil. Now notice, hell was prepared for him because it fits him. When he decided to separate himself and cause that rebellion, when he decided, I don't want to be here anymore, when he said, this is not good enough and I'm out of here, he was sent away. His choice was honored. He chose not to be with God, and God honored it. I'll kick you out. Separation. Look at Revelation 20 and verse 10. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Okay? You don't want to be here? Fine. You're out. Separated from God. But number two, it fits him. Because he has the power of death, and this power of death, the only weapon he has, now will confine him for eternity. Look at Revelation 20 and verse 14. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Hell is a place that is separated from God, where God is not, where eternal death resides. The devil didn't want to be with God. So he was separated. And the power of death that he has is now the power that will control him in eternal death. Hell was prepared for him because it fits. Hell was not prepared for me. Hell was not prepared for you because it doesn't fit. Notice, God doesn't want me to die. 2 Peter 3 and in verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some consider slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. God does not want me to die. Death was not prepared for me. It doesn't fit me. It's 
That's not what God wants. When he created Adam and Eve in the garden, he did not create death. It would, did not fit them. But once Satan came into the picture, he brought it with him to force us into what fits him, not what fits us. But number two, God wants fellowship with us. Jesus is pictured in Revelation 3 and in verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and any foreign will hear my voice and let me in. I will dwell with him and he with me. He wants fellowship with me. God wants to be with me. And he wants me to be with him. He doesn't want me to be separated where he is not. Therefore, hell is not prepared for me. It doesn't fit my nature. We've been made in the image of God. And being made in the image of God, He does not want us to die, and He wants us to be with Him. Therefore, hell does not fit. But there will be, sadly, people who will be there. Not because God wants it. Not because God desires it. But for the same reason that when God created those angels, including the one later known as devil and Satan, when he was created, God did not create him with the intention of putting him in hell. That was his choice. When he said, I don't want to be here anymore. And therefore, he doesn't want me there either. And when he created me, he didn't create me for that place. He created me for another place. The place where he is. Hell is real. But it was not prepared for me and you. And I don't have to be there. And you don't have to be there. And we can avoid it. Because Jesus came to destroy that death. Through his life, his death, and his resurrection, he destroyed forever the only power that the devil has. The power of death and separation from God. But Jesus released us, praise God. And through the blood of Jesus, I can have that which keeps me from there. When in baptism a person contacts the blood of Jesus, sin is forgiven, and I am no longer on the pathway to that place. And as I live every day and when I mess up and sin and God in his graciousness listens to my prayer of repentance, he erases it again. And I'm no longer on the path to that place. Hell's not prepared for you and me. Don't go there. Today, if you're on the pathway to heaven, praise be to God. But if you're not, it's time to get on the right path while we stand and sing.